Hello everyone, welcome to Parade of Paws. I'm Officer Thomas Anderson with the Casa Grande Police Department and with me today is Animal Control Officer Lisa Hartwell of the Casa Grande Animal Care and Adoption Center. Today we are going to showcase quite a few animals for you, uh, some dogs and some cats. Before we do that, I'd like to uh, say that, uh, I'd like to introduce Lisa and I'd like to say that I know that you bring an invaluable uh, amount of experience to the city of Casa Grande. Uh, specifically in the field of veterinary medicine. So could you uh, tell us a little bit about yourself? Um, yes, I worked for uh, as a vet tech for about 34 years in uh, California, Utah, and Arizona, and uh, was an animal control officer in Utah as well, and now here for the past two and a half years, three years. Um, but uh, that veterinary technician experience has helped us with a lot of the animals that come in. Not everybody's healthy when they come in, and it's helped us to uh, keep them going a bit more or do a little bit to uh, get them so they can find their forever home, get them healthy, and, and uh, help us our adoption rates a lot. Sure, yeah. sure. Well, uh, let's get started right away. We've got, I think we're gonna take a look at a, a few dogs today first, correct? Um, actually, we're gonna look at cats today. Oh, okay. So we well, don't get our dogs up or our kitties upset. All right, well, let's look at some cats. Okay, we're gonna start with uh, two brothers, Kung Pao and Wasabi. Kung Pao and Wasabi. Yeah, and this was three brothers, but one got adopted, so these two need to find their forever home. These guys are full of life, energy. They are guaranteed to keep you guys entertained. Uh, they have grown quite a bit. They were like this when we got them, and they have grown so much. So, but the, they have pretty blue eyes. They're Siamese mix, short hair, not a lot of upkeep. They will just keep you laughing. They keep us laughing in here. This one's Wasabi. Kung Pao is like he got knocked in the nose. Is so. it pretty rare to have a brother, sister, or, or some sibling or, animals come in? Yes, or a multiple of them. It, it is rare. We don't usually see. We have been seeing a lot of Siamese and Siamese mixes lately, though. So, um, But, yep, these guys, and, and, and even rare that they haven't gone out the door yet because sure. usually people really want the Siameses, and we've had a lot of them. So they say, pick me. We are Siamese. So if you families please. looking for uh, <laughs> more than just one pet and little combo package. They can go around too. They are totally fine being separated. So if you can't do two, you can do one. They are just as entertaining as me in one, and they're very healthy cats. Excellent. So. <laughs> He's purring. Then, next we'll have Wizard. Wizard's a cool cat. He's a domestic long hair, possibly Maine Coon mix. Um, he's a bit more aloof, a bit more mystical. He's got his own agenda, and um, but uh, loves to be petted. But he's just waiting to uh, find every corner in your house and see what he can discover along the way. But um, he is wizard is about a year and a half. And will wizard get bigger than that? He's probably nope, pretty big. No, this cat is wizard. Already, huh? He's going to need a little brushing. He doesn't have any mats, but he and he does take good care of himself. But he is gonna need some brushing every once in a while and obviously he'll love it. But uh, see him, he's looking to see what can I get into. <laughs> and folks that don't have a lot of experience with, with cats, especially long-haired cats, how, how often should you be grooming them? Or should you be doing it yourself or professionally? Typically or? they don't care for baths too much. You may have one that doesn't mind a bath every once in a while, but they do such a good job usually of keeping themselves clean that uh, a good brushing once or twice a week. We'll have another one out here that probably is gonna require some grooming. Um, if they do get mats, you'll need to get them to a groomer to get those out of them because it, it pinches their skin and can be really uncomfortable for them, so. Great. It's wizard. Next we have French fry. French fry, as you can see, is just a lean athletic boy. And he was actually a stray off of French Street, so that's why we called him French Fry. I was just about to ask you, how did French Fry earn his <laughs> Besides, name? he kind of looks like a French Fry. He, he's, again, just so curious, ready to go, ready to just, what can I do next? And you've got to realize that these guys are stuck in a, a small kennel, a, a comfortable kennel, but he's, they need to be out and about and go, and he wants to find his forever home so he can get going. He's not been neutered yet. Everybody leaves spayed or neutered. So uh, that would be part of his adoption package is he'd be neutered before he left in all his shots. All right. Okay, French fry. And next we have... Next we have Cupid. 
Cupid. Cupid is a supersized Siamese mix. <laughs> Supersize is right. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Cupid is very um, under underestimated. He's he looks like he he just wants to be a couch potato. He wants to be a lap cat. He wants to just watch you from afar. He's um, he's shy guy, but he just uh, is very uh, loving. Just his beautiful blue eyes. He won't get any bigger. <laughs> good. <laughs> so, and he is, um, Cupid is about two years old, neutered male. So, if you want a big round thing to hold and love on, this is him. And then next we have Belle. Now, Belle's the one that I was talking about that's probably going to need some grooming. Oh, honey, it's all right. She's a little scared. She's very shy and scared. She came to us. Um, the family had to move out of state, and she wasn't able to go. So um, they weren't able to take her with. I believe she's had kids around her. I've seen her come up to the front of the cage when kids come in, like she's real interested and rubs on the cage. Um, she's, uh, uh, she is how old is? Belle is three years old. Orange and white tabby mix. And you see, she just loves, she just wants to be loved. She's spayed female and uh, very quiet, very kind cat. But her long coat makes her more susceptible to mats. And um, she's probably be one that you might have to have groomed or keep brushed constantly. <laughs> so she's a little bit more upkeep. And how old did you say she was? She's two. And do you ever see a, a do you see cats or dogs come in younger, older, or is it just? We Whatever. get every age. We get from newborn to 13, 14 year olds. Um, we had a, a 12 year old cat in here yesterday that went to its home, went back home that uh, somebody had found. So we have every age that comes in. Yep. And um, as long as they're real healthy, uh, we do everything we can, stay healthy. We, even the ones that uh, need a little bit of work. A lot of times we'll have uh, the animal hospital Pinal, um, on Pinal will uh, donate their time and help us get them healthy so we can find their home. That's great. And you can see that when she came out, she was very shy, mm -hmm. but she's calmed down quite a bit. Though. Yes, she's a little camera shy. <laughs> she's a good cat. Okay, Belle, there you go. And last but not least, we have Jeffrey. <laughs> this is Jeffrey. He's grown quite a bit since uh, we've had him as well. Jeff I, I hear Jeffrey uh, has an interesting story about how he came to He does have a story. Uh, we heard some meowing when we came in one morning into work, quite a loud meowing, and uh, traced it to one of the city workers' trucks, and he was inside the engine there and couldn't get out. So uh, we, with a little coercing, <laughs> we got him out. He was about half this size, and uh, he's turned it into a very healthy kitty. And um, the cats who are this time of year are real prone to uh, getting up into that engine to get warm. Um, and so it's a, it's a good idea to kind of thump on your car hood as you go out, especially if you have cats around or stray cats around, to uh, get them scared out of there before you start your engine so they won't be a victim of a fan belt. Okay, well, let's move on to the dogs. Okay. All right, we're going to start with our smallest one first. This is Dinky. <laughs> Did you say Dinky? Dinky. Yes, okay. Yes. He's a Chihuahua. He's about a year and a half. Um, he's, <laughs> he acts like he's very shy right now. <laughs> but let me tell you, he's full of life. He uh, doesn't care for other dogs too much. He wants to be the only dog. He has an opinion about that. He really decides that he wants his own person, and I want it to be just my own. So tell me, is it true or a misconception that most small dogs like these are lap dogs? Not all of them. A lot of them are. It, I mean, they all have their individual personalities, you know, they really do. He's, he likes to be cuddled and held, but then he's also going to want to go and, and get going too. But he is a cuddler. And, um, so. You see people carrying little dogs like this around in bags and purses. What's your advice about, or your opinion about that maybe? Do you think that's a wise choice or just whatever, to each his own, you know, if they're going to carry the dog around in a purse? If, if that dog's safe, I guess that's my main concern. Sure. If that dog is safe and you've got tags on that dog, so when it does jump out or get startled, we'll know how to get it home to you. Um, that's, that's my biggest concern. Okay. Hey, Dinky. He's a good boy. Now we have a Doc. 
Doc is a one-year-old male uh, neutered blue healer mix, or some people call them Queensland healers. Um, he is just a really kind boy, just eager to, to be your buddy. Healer's a, he's kind of got, he's a bigger dog, but he loves to be cuddled, and Julie's going to show you, he loves to be held like a baby. <laughs> so he's, come here, Doc. Healers are a, a working breed. Um, they need a job. They get bored easily. Sure. So um, if you provide them enough toys and things to do, he'd be a good dog for somebody that's out in the yard a lot, doing a lot of yard work, wanting to be around. They want to be around people. Uh, and, healers uh, are known as, as herding dogs, like, like yeah, cow dogs, correct? Yes, yeah. uh-huh. And how did you come, how did uh, Doc get to... Doc was a stray, um, came into our stray pens, I believe, and... Um, He's just, they always come in, they're a little bit timid at first, and within a few days of Julie working with them and us coming in and out, and they just know they're, they're just here for a good hotel room and food mm -hmm. and, and love, and they come around, and he did come around really fast. You say he's only a year old, correct? Mm -hmm. So people yep. shouldn't be put off by all that gray hair all over him. He's not no. an old dog, he's still he's a young He's a guy. blue merle color, is what they call this mm -hmm. color, with some red merle in him. So. It's a beautiful dog. Yeah. Okay. And next we have um, Razzle Dazzle. Now, Razzle's not a cow herding dog. <laughs> no. no. She's a bit more of a lap dog. This is Razzle. We are not quite sure what she is. Um, we've got guests of maybe some poodle or Maltese in there, maybe some Chihuahua. Um, she, her coat has glossed up and done much better since she's been with us. Um, she actually looked like she could have been part of a hairless dog. Oh, she wants to be held. So she's going to require a little bit of grooming. Mm -hmm. Razzle, she is at least three years old, maybe even closer to four or five. Still has a lot of life in her. She loves to play outside with the other dogs. She loves to take walks on leashes. And she's just a cute girl. I could see her all decked out from sweater or something like that. Mm, on her. Sure. It's okay. So while we we're waiting for the next one, is it just dogs and cats that you deal with mostly here? Or? Mostly we deal with dogs and cats. Um, every once in a while we'll get a rabbit, we'll get tortoises. Um, we've gone on javelina calls and snake calls. As a courtesy, we do snakes calls. <laughs> we just put it out there. <laughs> and um, uh, we'll get some coyote sightings and things like that. But pretty much the wildlife, they are to be left alone. Um, you don't want to be feeding them, just we're in their environment as much as they're in ours. Mm. And so uh, we, we don't respond a whole lot as far as trying to capture them. Okay. This is Sadie. Sadie is a one-year-old female German Shepherd mix, or she's a German Shepherd and she's just really small. She starts out very shy, but she is so eager to please. She's really eager to please. She's a good girl. Um, she's learned how to walk on a leash. She was real afraid of it at first, but she's learned how to walk on a leash. She's a good size. She's not going to get any bigger. She's already uh, at least a year old. and um, Very active. Mm -hmm. She'd be a good dog if somebody wanted to take out, go running, you know, keep her around. And she's not real vocal. She's uh, not a big barker or anything like that. So. And people put so much value in an animal being a pure breed, but beautiful dog even if she has a little bit of a mix in her right she's yeah we get purebreds we get mixes um, a lot of people think we just get mixes or mutts but we get and you'll see here shortly we get a lot of purebreds as well so um, sometimes people know that they're looking for a German Shepherd they'll come in looking for a German Shepherd mix mm -hmm. and so we pretty much can accommodate anybody <laughs> with whatever right. breed they're looking for okay and next we have Pacino Pacino came to us very matted, uh, didn't look anything like this. His family had to move out of state as well. Um, uh, Stephanie's pooch parlor right there on Sacatone will donate her grooming services to us uh, during the month and she did a wonderful job of grooming him and he turned into a whole different dog once we had him groomed. He just got those mats, we're just pinching him, it, they were all over just thick and so um, he is a great guy. Pacino's about a year and a half. He's not been altered or neutered yet, but that's part of his adoption package. And uh, he's a Shih Tzu mix. 
Um, real good boy. Just wants, just wants the attention. He's got a great personality. He loves to go on leash walks, and um, so he's a good boy. He's going to appreciate that haircut when the summer comes back around. Yeah. He's one that's going to definitely need to stay groomed about every six weeks. This type of dog needs to be shaved down and groomed, whether you keep them in a longer cut or a real short cut. Okay, next we have Luke. And this, speaking of our purebreds, this is one of our purebreds. Uh, Luke is a five-year-old male Weimreiner. Here he comes. <laughs> He's a beautiful, beautiful dog. And the Weimreiners, they'll come in a lighter gray or this darker gray. Most of the time you see them kind of more of a fawn or lighter gray color. They're called the uh, ghost dog because of that, because okay. they look kind of like a ghost. Um, He's so, you know, it's my experience that uh, people really like these dogs because of, of how beautiful they are, and uh, they're rather expensive mm -hmm. if you purchase one. Um, how did how did this Weimaraner come to you? How did Luke come around? Again, we don't know all of Luke's story. He came in our stray pins, which we have our stray pins available after hours. If somebody mm -hmm. finds a dog, um, they can put them in there. There's papers they can write a note out there if they need to, or if they don't want to, that's fine. We do also know that a lot of people in this time are losing their homes, and sure. um, we would much prefer them to place them in the stray pen than to just leave them out on the streets, or as we find sometimes, just leave them in their backyards and take off. So he stands a good chance. He gets to uh, there's rescues. There's people that want this specific breed. He's a hunting sporting breed. Um, so has a lot to give. He's got a lot to offer. He's a good looking dog. He is. And he knows some manners already too. Julie's worked with him a bit and he's, he's been worked with a little bit. Now we have Fizz. Fizz hasn't been with us very long. Um, she kind of looks dirty, but she's clean. She had a bath. This is just her hair. <laughs> and uh, that's the name Fizz. She is a nine month old female. Um, Again, not quite sure. We think she might be Schnauzer Poodle mix or a Schnoodle. And um, real sweet, quiet girl, but she does have an opinion. You go play with her or visit with her, and you walk away. She's going to let you know about it to get back over here, and she'll, she'll tell you. So she's not going to get much bigger than this. She might fill out, but she's not a huge dog, so she'd be a great apartment dog or uh, somebody that wants a companion around them. She, she wants to be with her person. Oh, it's okay. It's all right. So that's Fizz. Now we get to our biggest dog in our shelter, and we have Crystal. Crystal's a bull mastiff. Yes, she's she is. <laughs> the brindle color, and uh, she's a, she's a very good dog. Um, her, she has a little bit of a story where her um, family had to relinquish three mastiffs, and um, the other ones are got adopted, and she's the last one left. And uh, she was the mom of the other ones, so. It's kind of a mysterious breed, the Bull Mastiff. Can you tell us a little bit about it? Well, I think they were originally bred for uh, guarding against bulls, bears, and lions in Britain, from what I understand. So if you have bulls, bears, or lions, <laughs> or just somebody you want to stay out of your backyard, I don't think I'd come in your backyard. The, the dog that looked like that. She is a good watch dog. She doesn't care for other dogs too much. She would probably want to be the only dog in the family. She does like kids. She, she grew up with kids, um, and uh, so she does like kids. She can be a house dog or an outside dog or a combination. She's uh, pretty well potty trained um, and does a good job with that. So a large muscular dog like Crystal or Luke, the uh, Weimaraner earlier, um, what should people be con concerned with uh, when they pick a dog or choose a dog like this uh, as far as walking them on leashes and uh, being able to control an animal that's that small. Yes, that you're, you're definitely going to need to get the proper gear for her. She needs a little bit of work on the leash. I certainly wouldn't put a child behind her. Mm -hmm. It would need to be somebody with a, uh, an adult with a, a stronger hand, but she'll get it. She'll learn it. And then uh, she'll also need the proper fencing in the yard. Um, the best thing for her would probably be the concrete wall fencing or um, a very secure wood fence, um, something she can't just barrel through if she sees another dog go by or something like that. She, and it, uh, real secure. It's not one you'd want to keep on a chain all the time or anything like that. She needs a, a, a big enough yard she can roam in and then a, a home where she can come in and cuddle with her family. You know, my first question would be, 
um, with a dog this size is, is he potty trained? She, she is, I'm sorry, is she, she potty is trained? potty trained. She, uh, unfortunately here, our hours aren't real kind sure. as far as our potty trained dogs, but she, uh, every once in a while we'll have an accident in her kennel, but she is a potty trained dog. She has lived in the house. Um, and uh, so she's used to that. She's used to okay. knowing when to go out. She might need a little bit of remedial training, but she'll so that's do something good. that you make aware to anyone coming to adopt oh, definitely. an animal. Anyway. Yeah. You, you let them know because you've monitored that animal and you know whether or not they're potty trained. Right. And we always tell them to keep their world small at first sure. because they've been in here a while and then gradually let them get used to their new environment. Okay. So. Okay. Now our last um, dog is Lena. And she's a little bit of a, um, a special dog that just hasn't been with us very long. Yeah, I've heard a little bit about Lena. She had a little bit of an accident, right? Yeah. She came to us with um, a broken jaw. Her bottom jaw was broken, and it was literally hanging loose, and you could see her teeth hanging down. Um, definitely something, of course, we thought, oh, my gosh, we can't afford to fix that. And so we talked to uh, Dr. John over at the... Um, Casa Grande Animal Hospital and they put their heads together and through their generosity they were able to give us a cost that we could get her fixed. She has some wires in her jaw right now. Uh, they spayed her and uh, we got her shots, her rabies, she got dewormed and she'll need a little bit of aftercare and uh, to go get the wires out at one point when her jaw heals and um, she'll be good to go. But she's a real mellow girl. We called her Lena because she kind of looks like a javelina. She's a terrier of some sort, maybe a Cairn Terrier mix. She won't get any bigger. Um, she's about a year and a half to two years. So, nice quiet dog. Yes, and ready for the holidays. Yeah, it's she is. Well, Lena is a good example of the relationships that, that your office in the center here has been able to develop with other people in the community, other business owners such as the, uh, the animal hospital. Um, Another good program that you're involved with is the Spay and Neuter program. program. Can you tell us, or I'm sorry, the Spay and Neuter grant. Can you tell us a little right, bit about that? Right, right. Well, uh, the license plates that look like this are, mm. um, when somebody buys a license plate, money towards that goes into a Spay and Neuter grant. Um, and then the agencies uh, vow for that grant. And um, we got it again for the second year in a row. And we're able to help a number of uh, pet owners to get their animals spayed and neutered at no cost. All they would be responsible for is a rabies shot, which would be $10 if they don't already have one. And um, so it's going to help a lot of people. We helped, I think, close to 300 last year. And uh, yeah. And who's eligible for the spay and neuter program? Uh, any city resident, city of Casa Grande residents so that's got a dog or cat, you, there's two pets per household that uh, they can have done. Right. So it's probably important to note that uh, you may live in the city. The city of Casa Grande is unique because there are some pockets that are county pockets and, and that aren't actually city limits. They're inside the major city limits, right. but they're bounded uh, or they're not annexed. And those right. people are not eligible, correct? They're not eligible for the, this voucher program, but they are eligible for our low-cost okay. spay or neuter program. So if they're interested in that, we can help them with that as well. County residents or city residents can, can uh, take part of that. Excellent. Lisa, tell me, where does a, a, a citizen need to go to uh, have their animal spayed or neutered through the Spay and Neuter Grant Program? Oh, what they want to do if they want to take part of our uh, voucher program is to come to the animal shelter at 202 East 1st Avenue, or better yet, to the City Hall building, the Finance Building, at 510 East Florence Boulevard. They're there all the time, and we're in and out, so we don't want you to miss out on this opportunity. There is an application that you fill out, and um, then we will go over them each week. We, the supervisor goes over them, and we give you a call. We set up the appointment as far as tells you when to take the animal in to have it spayed or neutered. And if you have a current rabies vaccine, you want to make sure you have the certificate, or we'll tell you how you get that taken care of as well. So Right around the corner uh, behind Christmas is uh, New Year's, and we'll be getting a lot of... Uh, uh, at the police department, we'll be getting a lot of calls about fireworks and noise, right. uh, firecrackers. Well, that affects your business also, doesn't it? Oh, yes. Tell us a little bit about the dangers of fireworks and, and loud noises for our animals and what uh, pet owners can do to safeguard their animals from being hurt or being involved in an accident that involves those. Well, I guess what people need to remember is their hearing and their feeling is so keen that what we hear, they're probably hearing 
I don't know the value, but say 10 times more. So just thinking, especially older dogs are, are very susceptible. Um, keeping gates secured, we get a lot of animals after the fireworks um, that they got out of the gate, had no idea how they got out of the gate, but they'll figure out a way. It's fight or flight, okay, if they think. So um, there are some things you could do if you know your animal is very susceptible. You can speak with a veterinarian, and there are some medication that can be given. There's actually some natural medication that can be given. They just have to ask a few questions, get that in your animal before the festivities begin, and um, help him out quite a bit. So, But uh, if you do lose somebody over the holidays, uh, the first place to check is with us, okay? okay. And don't hesitate. Check right away, even if it's leaving a voice message, it's on 24-7. So uh, since you mentioned that, how do folks get in contact with you here? Where are you located? How do okay. they call you? We're at 202 East First Avenue um, on the south side of the railroad tracks off of Florence Street. And we are open from 8 to 4 daily. Uh, try and take a lunch between noon and 1. Doesn't always happen. And um, on the holidays, we're closed, but we do have an officer on call for emergencies and we've got uh, somebody that's taking care of the animals and they're also checking our stray pens two or three times through the day so if somebody gets put in a stray pen then um, we'll be able to bring them in and keep them safe. Sure. Tell, tell me a little bit more about the stray pins. Uh, th that's obviously for after hours or on the weekends, and where are they located? Right, um, and our phone number, our phone number too is 426-9300, and it's always on a voice messaging service, and you can leave a message 24-7. Um, the stray pins are on actually on Main Avenue, so that is where you would take your animal. There's a set of six nice, nice, uh, kennels that have been set up through the Rotary Club. They donated to their time to us and uh, there's papers you can leave info or you don't even have to leave info but you lock the animal in, there's water in there, we'll take care of the food when we get them out of there and evaluate them and see if they have a microchip and see if we can't get them back to their home or if nobody comes for them uh, we'll put them up for adoption. Okay so uh, let's move into probably one of the last things we're going to talk about here on today's show but um, if I want to adopt an animal what do I need to do? What's, what's the process going to be? Okay, uh, you'd probably want to first call us and set up a time to come down just so you don't miss us or you can try and stop in and, and see that we're here at the 202 East First Avenue office. Um, you come in, we'll walk you through the shelter, take a pick of whichever animal you like or whichever one picks you and then uh, we fill out an application and it is uh, 150 generally for a dog to be adopted. That includes their spay or neuter, their distemper parvo combination, their rabies shot, their city license, and a deworming. And we do have some animals that have guardian angels. Sadie, the shepherd, she had a guardian angel. And that just means that somebody puts somebody towards that dog to help save her life, and we can discount your cost on adoption. Um, the cats are generally $75, and the same applies to them. Their spay or neuter, their distemper combination, their rabies. We do license cats here in the city, so they would require they would also get their city license and a deworming. And the licensing takes place where? The licensing, if the animal has a current rabies shot, uh, of course, if you adopt it from us, it's going to go home with a valid license. But on your own, you would take your city uh, your rabies certificate that the veterinarian gives you, and you take it to City Hall at um, 510 East Florence Boulevard and they will help you there and license your dog. Great. And it's anywhere between 15 or $30. 15 if they're altered and 30 if they're not. Well, we sure appreciate all the work that you do here, uh, you and the rest of the staff here at the office, at the center, um, and commend you for all the wonderful relationships you have in the community. As you mentioned earlier, a couple of them with the animal hospitals and, and the Rotary Club, and I'm sure there's countless others, oh and <laughs> it helps to continue uh, uh, the, to, to grow this center here and, and do the hard work that you're doing. So. I uh, commend you for that, Thank and uh, we want to wish everyone happy holidays, and we'll see you next time on Parade of Paws.